Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthy Hong Kong. Welcome to part two of our series on epigenetics with Professor Ziff. In part one we discussed what epigenetics is. The genes hold the blueprint to the whole body, but it is the epigenetics which determine which genes are expressed in which part of the body, and so make each cell in the body unique. But epigenetics are not only differentiates the cells in the body, but also reacts to the environment to provide a more flexible adaption mechanism than can be possible through the genes. In this part, we will talk about DNA methylation. Is it reversible and whether it can be inherited? Yeah, can we just return very briefly to methylation? What does it do to the gene? And then sure. is it reversible? Is it like, or is it a one-way thing? Right. So that leads us to the fourth revolution, which is the reversibility. And it is possible that the environment will change our genes, but does it do it forever? Of course, natural selection will do it forever because it just changes the sequence. But what about epigenetics? Is it going to do it forever? Uh, or is it going to change? And that answer to the question, of course, has immense, you know, social, philosophical, political implications. So if you were poor as child, are you doomed? Uh, if you didn't exercise for 20 years, are you doomed? If you had bad diet, are you doomed? Right. So one of the questions we asked in the maternal care model is, can we change it? And what's the logic behind it? The process and of DNA methylation is an enzymatic process. It's a chemical reaction. It is a reversible chemical reaction because if DNA can methylate and be methylated, it can also be demethylated. And if it's reversible, then potentially you should be able to change it because like any enzyme, this is what, for example, drugs do. They act on enzymes and they change them to, in a way that now you get the reverse reaction. So we asked that question. If so, can we change the behavior of an animal that had high maternal care to behave like an animal that had low maternal care or vice versa using compounds that interact with the enzymes that lay down the methylation pattern? And indeed, we could. So for example, when we added methionine, we, uh, we could change the the, met the methylation profile to one way, and if we added another enzyme that inhibited, another enzyme inhibitor, we could change it to the other way. And so, if you understand the concepts of most enzymatic reaction, or almost all enzymatic reactions, are reversible. Some are very, some are very easy to reverse. That what we do in life is essentially play on these reversible reactions. That's how we shift our metabolism in the body from burning sugar to gathering sugar. Uh, you know, from uh, high pressure to low pressure of the blood. So all our processes are reversible. Then why would epigenetics not be reversible? Of course, epigenetics is a long-term kind of controller. We have short-term, immediate things that are reversed in within milliseconds. Epigenetics is writing a program. So you don't want the program to be erased all the time, then it would be useless as a program. Right. But there should be ways, theoretically, to reverse it. Chemically, it's possible. Biochemically, it's possible. So it's if it is feasible. But again, the question is how it operates within the complexity of the program. You know, how, how is the program built to prevent us from changing everything, because that will be a disaster, while maintaining some degrees of freedom to, to change something that probably evolutionary uh, were useful for us. So for example, exercise is not just burning calories, it is changing how our genes are programmed. And exercise at any time will do that, because exercise is a signal to the body, this guy has changed his habits, and therefore, he needs a different body. And he's not sedentary anymore. He's not sitting on a couch. You need a, one body to sit on the couch. You need another body to, to, to ride your bike. 
And so the system is saying, okay, something has changed. Let's reprogram. Like a good corporation that has to change strategy based on changes. Right. And so what epigenetic does, it takes those executive decisions to change things for the long term. And so certain behaviors that we do give those signals. And exercise or food are good examples of kind of signals that, change, that send a signal, okay, this is a real change. We need to reprogram some things here. Right. So I think we Do you may... believe that epi epi can epigenetics be inherited? Um, or does it get reset every generation? Right. So, you know, the beauty of epigenetics is that it can be reset, right? Because if you think about the logic of the process is to adjust, uh, you know, an old DNA to a rapidly developing world. And so we don't want to inherit too much. However, the big question is, and it is reset to a large extent uh, during the early uh, periods of development. But the question is, there are certain signals that we don't want to pass that have evolutionary value. Uh, for example, if an environment has consistently changed in a certain way and we have reprogrammed ourselves, it will be beneficial for our offspring to remember that program. Right. And therefore, it could be that evolution has you know, figured out the mechanism by which to transmit epigenetic information. So this is one of the most contentious uh, fields in science. And uh, it has a tremendous amount of passion and animosity between the camps. And, um, you know, and usually if you don't like the idea, you just kill the messenger and, and put him to disrepute. So a lot of scientists who ventured into claiming that there is epigenetic inheritance suffered, and, you know, personal damage uh, because the over overwhelming consensus is that epigenetic is reversed but there is an emerging body of knowledge both you know epidemiological in humans and and um, behavioral data in animals that certain behaviors certain experiences have an impact on the behavior of future generations certain eating habits have an impact on you know, not just the next generation, which is an immediate exposure, but on, we consider the third or fourth generation is already a transmission that is not an immediate exposure. Because of course, if a baby is in the womb of his mother and the mother was diabetic, diabetic, this is an immediate, not only the mother is diabetic, the baby is exposed to, that, to a diabetic environment. But if it passes three generations, then that's already what we call a transgenerational transmission. So there is evidence both from the dietary field that, that certain diet habits of fathers or mothers can impact third generation metabolic programming. And also that, uh, you know, social experience like trauma uh, might have an impact on downstream generations uh, and chemical exposures for toxins to toxins can have impact on fourth generation. Uh, however, the data is still weak and is still in a, are under you know a lot of argumentation but implications are of course huge which imply that you know the way we conduct our lives uh, it has an impact on our grandchildren or great grandchildren beyond you know the processes that we know um, for example if we make a lot of money and our children inherit it that will have a huge impact on their lives. So there, there are processes we know, or if we are born in a free country and our children inherit that citizenship, that will have an, an immense importance. So, you know, we know that transgenerational effects. The question is, how many, how, how many of these are really mediated through DNA and through epigenetics? Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. For anyone who is interested in having an extended health span, it's encouraging to hear that we can control our epigenetics by sending it messages through our actions, such as the exercise that we do. In part three, we will be talking about DNA methylation and how it is related to aging. So please do subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified when it is released. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you all soon.